Hi, my name is Melissa Layupan, and today we'll be taking a look at a travel request process that was built using K2 Black Pearl. In addition to that, we'll also be taking a sneak peek at K2's new and upcoming forms technology. Our demo today starts with Neil. Neil is a consultant who's assigned to a new project. Neil needs to book travel to the client site to gather additional requirements for their new project. So to do this, Neil is going to submit a new travel request through the company's travel request site. The travel request site is a SharePoint site and located inside the site is a link to the new travel request form. Clicking on the link brings up the new travel request form. This form was built using K2's new forms technology. Essentially, K2 allows process designers the ability to create feature-rich forms that not only incorporate business rules and external information, but as you can see, the forms are visually appealing as well. As with other K2 products, K2 forms are built in a graphical, no-code, drag-and-drop environment, and this means that creating a K2 form is better described as a configuration exercise as opposed to a coding exercise. If we take a closer look at his form, Neil can see that his information from Active Directory is automatically populated and viewable inside the form. Neil can also see that all of the projects that he's been assigned to are also pre-populated within the form as well. So Neil simply needs to select the project that he's traveling for. And after selecting the appropriate project, all of the associated project information is then loaded into the form, such as the project manager, who in this case is Holly Anderson, the contract number, and the contract date. Neil can also add any additional comments, such as travel arrangements need to be booked by end of week no later. And since Neil's travel arrangements are being booked by a travel coordinator, Neil is going to attach a scan copy of his ID to help facilitate the booking. Below that, Neil is going to enter his desired flight information, such as the departure date, the return date, the departure airport, which in this case, he's leaving from Los Angeles, and then his destination. The remaining information is optional, and at this point, Neil has no need to book additional accommodations, such as lodging and a rental car. So now that Neil has entered all of his travel information, he's going to go ahead and submit the form for approval. Now that the form is submitted, the next step in our process is for Holly, who's the project manager, to approve the travel request. In this case, Holly receives an email notifying her that a new travel request has been submitted and it requires her review. Underneath her task list, Holly notices that a new task in Outlook has been created and this task is prompting her to review the travel request that was just submitted by Neil. K2 has generated a draft itinerary for Holly's review. Holly can now quickly view the proposed information and make an informed decision. So based on this information, Holly decides to go ahead and approve the travel request. She can do this by either opening up the task form where she can view detailed information behind the request, but in this case, since Holly is already familiar with this particular request, Holly doesn't need to go through all of the details, so she's simply going to reply back to the email with her decision, which in this case is approve. However, she could have selected reject or revise if she needed to. Now that she's entered in her decision, she's going to go ahead and just send it off. Now that Holly has approved the request, 
a new task is allocated to Cody. Cody is the travel coordinator responsible for booking travel within the company. Cody accomplishes her work almost exclusively within the SharePoint travel site. In this site, Cody can do a number of things, such as viewing all of the upcoming travel within the site's calendar. And Cody can also work on any tasks that are assigned to her, such as the travel request that was just submitted by Neil. Clicking on the task will pull up her task form. Cody can view all of the information behind the request. This in turn allows her to make proper reservations and accommodations. So Cody can view information around who made the request, so in this case she could see it was Neil, and she can view his ID card if she needed to, and she can view any other hotel, flight, or car information. So once Cody has completed making the necessary arrangements, she goes ahead and approves the travel request. Now that the travel request is completed, Neil receives a meeting request from Cody. This meeting request updates his calendar with travel information. Neil also receives an email confirming that the arrangements have been made. He can view the finalized itinerary, which shows him all of his flight information. And he can also view a summary report, which lists out all of the information behind the travel request, including information about the process, such as who approved his travel request and when. In terms of reporting, a number of reports can be built to surface travel information. In this example, we've used reporting services to create a couple management reports around things like the number of travel requests by department and who's been making the most travel requests. Another interesting report that can be built is a heat map. This heat map was built using Visio services. Information in this type of report can include things like the average duration to complete a task, along with the number of active instances at each step. Both these pieces of information help the business and IT understand the behavior of the travel request by allowing them to identify any issues with performance. This in turn allows them to introduce improvements into their process and process design. And that concludes today's demonstration. If you'd like more information, please visit k2.com. Thank you.